Hello, my name is Brandon Todd, and this is my individual project. Um, I built this compressor right here. Um, the compressor itself I bought at the DI. Uh, I was given a little air tank. I had to buy the little, little on-off switch and this pressure switch and this release valve. So what I did was I set up this air compressor so that I can paint using an airbrush like this. This little airbrush paints very fine, clean, clean finish work that looks very professional when you use an airbrush to paint. And I'm gonna do a demonstration of how it works and everything. Um, I'll show you the finished product that you can make with an airbrush and explain why this is important to my field and what I am going to be doing in the future. So first of all, an air compressor runs this little airbrush through the means of air coming up through a little valve. Screw this on. Plug in the little air line to the compressor. I've set it up so this switch here is a pressure switch. When I turn the compressor on, it goes up to about 45 PSI and turns off. Because any higher than that would be too much and it dries out your paint before it even leaves the airbrush, which just clogs it and causes problems. So that goes to there. And then when you're brushing, air comes out, PSI goes down. So it ha has to turn back on. So at about 25, 30 PSI, it's not a perfect switch, it will switch it back on. So it'll stay within that range as I'm using it, which means I don't have to turn it on and off and watch the pressure and all of those kinds of things. But this compressor is so small and so weak, if there's any of that pressure back in the system, it won't turn back on because it's not strong enough to start up again. So there's a little switch on the back right here that lets the pressure out one side of the system and keeps it running. So you take the paint, mix about half and half water and paint, depending if you need acrylic paint. If it's a different type, you just use thinner. Turn it on. It's 45, now I can paint. The brush, the air comes out, covers whatever you're painting, obviously. Um, turned it off, let the pressure out, this doesn't cause problems. And real quick, I'm gonna show you what kind of painting you can do. This is small scale personal stuff. So these are little models of tanks that were used in the first Gulf War. So get into the detail. All of that painting was done with a combination of airbrush and little paintbrushes down to these little figures and their faces and everything. Okay, so very simple. And part of the reason that I am choosing to do this is obviously it's a hobby that I enjoy, but also automation is something that we use in society rigorously all the time. Your car, a lot of the components in your house, hundreds and thousands of things that you use every day are built or manufactured by automated machines. And the problem is 
most of the people that run these automated machines and know how to operate them professionally are getting close to retirement age and not enough for young people like ourselves are going into these fields so that they can replace them which means we are have we have a drastic drastic shortage of these people who are trained to run these automated machines i personally have been learning this stuff through usu and bridgerland how to set up the wiring i had to do all the wiring for this air compressor so that it would operate correctly i had to mount it all to this little metal plate that it's sitting on um, had to buy all these little pneumatic fixtures that most people don't know how to work with. And literally from the ground up, besides the compressor, I didn't have to build that because you just buy it. Um, I built everything else myself. Uh, just go out, buy the components and put it together. Um, I got some help with the wiring from several professors that know what they're doing, just making sure I don't blow anything up or anything. But most of it I had to do myself and I had to figure out myself. Um, and that's the kind of small scale stuff that leads to automated robots that build your cars, to automated cleaning facilities that people take all of their clean, their dirty laundry to, to get cleaned for industrial grade projects where there's lots of people that have lots of clothes. You have these automated washing machines and all kinds of things like that. Um, and even paint guns. A lot of your cars are painted automatically now. People aren't actually painting them. They go into a booth with a robot that has a little airbrush fixture on the end and that paints your car, the robot. And that all has to be set up by an automation professional. And that is where I will be working for the next foreseeable future once I graduate from USU. Um, there's a company called AutoLeaf that, if you haven't heard of them, they produce car safety equipment. Uh, particularly airbags and related items. They build the inflators that ignite and expand your airbag to protect you. And they also build individual airbags for different car companies. So I will be doing an internship with them over the summer, learning how to set up the automated machines that produce these products. That is, a huge industry in automation because everyone needs safe airbags in their cars. And all of this stuff is a small scale version of what I'll be doing there. Um, and like I said, that's there's not enough people to do it. So we need, desperately need more people to go into these types of degrees, both technology systems, the outdoor product design stuff, um, general technology, technology engineering education, all of those kinds of fields desperately need trained professionals who can fill the gaps that are rapidly opening up through these people who were trained and knew what they were doing, finally retiring and finishing with their work in life. And so yeah, that's the basic idea of what I did for my project. Just super cool.